right, we're on Perik Dalid, Mishnah Dalid, Amisachanida. Fourth mission, the fourth chapter. We're going to talk about Hamaksha, a woman who's Maksha Laled, who has difficulty giving birth. But in order to understand this, to understand the whole Mishnah, we have to actually give a sort of like a primer on the difference between with Dam Nida and Dam Ziva. Okay, Nida and Zav. So in order to do this, let's go back to our Psukim. So we learned in Vayuka Perik Tedvav that there was something called Dam Nida. Dam Yezova Bibsara, Dam Zova. And it's a little complicated because the word Lazuv means to flow. So if she flows blood, but it's Benida Ta in the time of her Nida. So we said what she had to do was Tamei Shivat Yamim. She counts seven days. And at the end of seven days, then she goes to the Mikvah. All she has to count is seven straight days. That's called Dam Nida. But on the other hand, Ishaki Azuv Zov Dama. This is Pasuk Kafhei, Perak Tetvav. If her blood flows many days, below et nidita, not at the time of her nidut, al nidita, or beyond her times of nida, zov tumata, all this time of zov tumata, kime nidata tiyetmeahi. Then it's like her dam her nida, but there are other alakha, we're skipping, 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 because we're not going to go, it's beyond the purview of this Mishnah. Vim tahara mi zova. What she wants to become tahor, v'safra shivam yamim ve'achar titar. She has to count seven days, and then she has to be tahor tahora. So the, one of the big, big differences between nida and ziva is a nida. Let's we're going to skip down. I made I have a chart for you. A woman who's in nida, marked in the pink, right? She sees dam on day one, or day two, or day three. It doesn't matter. All seven, all six days, or seven days. At the end of the seven days. She, because if she's clean and she can examine herself and is clean, she can go to the mikvah that night, the night of the seventh day. That's, she doesn't have to have a shiva and a kiyim. But if she's a zava, and we'll see how does she become a zava. If she becomes a zava, if, the, if she, the, the flow continues, as soon as she finishes dam ziva, she has to count seven clean days. It's called shiva and a kiyim. Okay, so how does it become, what's in between nida and ziva? So she counts, she becomes a woman's a nida. She counts her seven days. Right after after she begins seeing Dam Nida, she counts seven days. At the end of those seven days, she starts an, an eleven day uh, uh, period of time, eleven day uh, uh, interval. And if she sees bleeding, menstrual bleeding during those eleven days, that's called Dam Ziva. If she sees for one day, if she sees one day only or two days, it's called Shomeret Yom Koneged Yom. Shomeret Yom Koneged Yom. She has to watch one day. Corresponding to the other day. So she's days one, one day of blood. Oh, she has to have one clean day, and then she can go to the mikvah. Okay, tovelet, and she's okay. But and she can eat kachim. But if she sees three days straight, then she's what's called Zava Gemura. That's the Zava the Torah. She has to count Shiva Anakim. She has to go to the mikvah on the seventh day, and she has to bring Korbano. That's Zava Gedola, Zava Gemura, and it's very, very serious. Thing, especially in the time of Beit Hamikdash, that she'd have to bring specifically korbanot. How do you count this, these these uh, these seven and eleven days? So this is just according to the Ramban. The Ramban is a whole different thing, very very complicated. We're not going to go into it, but according to the Ramban, as we said, she counts the seven days, and then she counts an eleven day period. She counts during these eleven days if she sees blood, okay, three straight days, then she's a zavagamura, but uh, if she doesn't see blood or whatever, or she's not a zavagamura. Then, as soon as that stops and the 11 days are over, then the next time she sees blood, the next time, doesn't have to start here, she can count, start one, two, doesn't matter. The next time she sees blood, whatever it is, let's say, for example, she sees a few days later, then you could, she starts counting her nida right over there. We're going to just undo that just so it's not complicated the next time we want to use it. Okay, with that in mind, now we can understand our Mishnah. So that's the Mishnah, Hamaksha. Let's say a woman has, is, has, starts bleeding in the middle of childbirth. So Hamaksha and the Bartunur says, Belay data in childhood be may need data during the time when she's normally a nida. Okay, meaning she's not it's not a time she didn't have a period she didn't see before. She had a period she she didn't have any breakthrough bleeding, so the next time she sees blood is may need data. Virata dan bakshota. And she saw she sees blood bakshota when she's in the middle of she's in labor basically. Then she has the status of a nida. But the Bartanura says something important. The Arak Torah, the Dam Koshi. The Torah said, Dam Koshi is Tahor. Remember we said that 11-day period? If she's in Yemei Ziva, the Torah says, we learn that from the Psukim, and she starts to give, goes into labor, she's Torah, nothing. If she sees, goes to labor, Yemei Nida, then Hamaksha is Nida. Okay. But remember we said that, let's say she's in Nida. She's, I'm sorry, in Yemei Ziva. 
So, Kishtash Losha Yamim Betocha Chadas Aryom. She's in the 11 days of Yemei Ziva, and she now, Kishta, she now sees she's in labor, poor girl, she's in labor for three days straight, and she's bleeding three days straight during those 11 days. Okay, so we'd say, we normally say, that's fine, we know, since it's because of childbirth, we just said, she's Tahora, but, Veshafta Me'et Le'et. Then, her labor pains took a break, okay, and she no longer, she, her, her labor stopped. Me'et Le'et for 24 hours, and then, Ve'yalda, and then she gave birth, Says the Mishnah, raise all your let it bezov. She announced the status of a zava. Oh, you said, you said that if we said that if uh, if she has three days straight of bleeding during the Zivah because of labor, no, because since this she had a whole break of a whole day, since she had a whole day in between, that showed you that these three days of bleeding were not because of labor. Because if it was because of labor, she would have given birth. So therefore, since she had a break of a day, therefore she became a zava. This bleeding was Yemei Ziva. She became a Zava and she's Yoledet Bezo. She's a Zava and she gave birth to Bezo and now she has to, you know, bring a Korban and all that other stuff. Divi Rabbi Lazar. Rabbi Yeshua, Rabbi Yeshua says, no, not Le'et Le'et. Laila V'yom. It can't just be 24 hours, like from 3 p.m. one day to 3 p.m. the next day. It's got to be the evening from 5 p.m. the evening till night. V'yom in the entire next day. Kilele Shabbat V'yomo. Just like the evening of Shabbat and a whole day. Less than that, if it's just Le'et Le'et, that's not considered enough of a shafta, enough of a break. And therefore, since she didn't have enough of a break, therefore it was considered that she didn't have a break and the, and the birth pains and the bleeding was from the birth and she's Torah. And when we say, shashafta min hatzar, min shashafta, when we say that she had a break, it's min hatzar, velo min adam. She doesn't have to stop bleeding in the middle of her 24 hours or laila vayom, rather. She can still consider to bleed, but if her labor pains stop, then that's considered the, a break and therefore it's considered that her bleeding from before was Yemei Ziva, was Dam Ziva. All right, look, again, this is me and Mishnah, are pretty complicated. Uh, I hope I explain them clearly. We'll stop here dedicated. I'm learning from everybody, my father. I have Simcha Ben Yitzchak, Kalman. Make it a great day.